Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my Oddball series, and we've got to talk. So I've been doing YouTube for a while. In fact, this is my seventh year. Um, as soon as December 15th episode comes out, I will have done two episodes a month on the 1st and 15th of every month for pretty much seven years total. And I think it's a pretty good accomplishment. And also, I think I only have one negative video out there, and it's about microtransactions. Because, honestly, I think there's enough negativity out there on the internet. However, not talking about negative things does not prevent them from happening. And so, I would be incorrect to say that all of the time that I'm out hunting video games or doing things and whatnot is positive. So yeah, buckle up, get ready. This is kind of gonna be a negative Nancy video. So I've got three topics to cover here and we'll just start with one of the easier ones. I went to a local pawn shop while I was game hunting uh, a couple of months ago, and they had a dollar bet, which I thought that was pretty cool. So I started looking through and it was mainly comic books, but I found a strategy guide for a video game, specifically for Jade Cocoon on the PlayStation 1. And it was in the dollar bin. It wasn't in the best of shape, but for a dollar for a for an RPG on the PS1 that I had the game and I could definitely use having the strategy guide, especially for a dollar, I said, why not, let's go. Well, I continued to look around in, in the pawn shop, just at the other games that they had and you know various other things, maybe some electronics, movies, stuff like that, and decided that the strategy guide was the only thing I was going to purchase that day. Walked up to the counter, and presented it to them and said, hey, I got this out of the dollar bin. And the guy, the cashier basically said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Let me just look this up. And I already know I was in trouble because what's worse than a, a video game store that doesn't have prices? It's one that turns around, had a price, and then changes it based on what they find on eBay. That's right. This guy behind the counter took the item that I was willing to purchase for a dollar and turned around and looked it up on eBay. He looked it up and I want to say it was like close to $93 or something like that. And he said that he would cut me a deal and sell it to me for $50. So I said, no thanks. I will buy it for a dollar like it was advertised. Uh, he said, no thanks as well. And now I've decided I'm probably never going back to that pawn shop or any of the pawn shops within that chain ever again in my life. So, <clears throat> The second story was actually very recent. In fact, it was today as I'm recording this. Lots and lots of times, Second and Charles will send out uh, various emails saying that, hey, we're buying all kinds of stuff. We're buying movies, we're buying CDs, we're buying video games. Please just bring it on in. So, I collected a couple of old DVD movies that I was not interested in watching again, boxed them up, and then took them to the second in Charles. Which point I had to take it out of the box and put it into their tub while the guy was watching me do this and he knew what I was doing and what I was bringing to him and made me wait in line 
all to turn around and say, sorry, we're having a buying freeze on movies right now. I was a little upset that he wasted my time, even though he could have shouted or said something to prevent me from wasting the time of taking all of the movies out of the cardboard box and putting them into the plastic bin that they require you to do. This felt a little on the disrespectful side. Also, it was kind of a mixed signal because I keep getting emails saying, hey, we're taking everything. And then I go to bring in something and well, no, not really, but you can donate it. Because I'm not here to donate my old movies. I was here to sell them to either buy new 3D Blu-rays that are not in my collection currently, or video games. And, well, it was pretty upsetting to just suddenly be told one thing and then another, and suddenly I've wasted a bunch of time, gas, you know, and travel to get down, down there and just, no, it's, it's not worth it. So, lesson learned. I don't think I'm going to be dealing with Second and Charles anymore. And the final thing, and, it, and yes, I get it. It is a train wreck. It is the bandwagon that everyone is jumping on. So yes, I am here to kind of jump on it a little bit as well. GameStop and their new retro push. I don't think this is good for the community. Uh, and when I say the community, I mean the retro gaming community. If the GameStop corporate had even half of the passion that the customer base that they are targeting has, then this could be a good thing. It could be like a service of, hey, we, we are discovering games you know, retro games that are that have been in storage units and stuff like that and making them available for purchase and finding them a good home. But in reality, that's not what GameStop is doing. Uh, I, I truly believe GameStop is only interested in the profitability of these retro games. Uh, they they really just suit C dollar signs and really not much else. And I have a feeling that that's going to hurt the retro community more than help it. It's going to hurt the retro community because GameStop's not going to be testing these games to see if something like a Pokemon game has the ROM chip has lifted its legs off the board because of the improper soldering job. Uh, they are not going to be changing out batteries, save batteries on any of these older cartridge-based games. They're not gonna be cleaning any of these games. Uh, some of these stores have been caught not inspecting any of these games or even knowingly taking uh, reproduction games or fake games and selling them as real. I believe that that is fraud. And yes, I know that that is a very strong word that is used in court. Nonetheless, it still feels like fraud to me. I am not a lawyer, but misrepresenting a product as being authentic and selling it at an authentic price doesn't feel legal to me. It feels like GameStop would lose that battle in court. Now, like I said, most of the time, I'm a much more positive person. And I don't let these things really drag me down too much. But it does kind of irk me that these places like GameStop and Second and Charles and that pawn shop are trying their best to take advantage of people. And that's what really upsets me. Even Second and Charles has several reviews online from various locations where people are complaining that, you know, the sellers are complaining that it's no longer good to sell to Second and Charles because 
Second and Charles is only taking the top 1% of valuable items of either books, movies, uh, video games, and stuff like that. Any, they're only taking the cream of the crop. They used to take everything. And that was what they were trying to build themselves on. But now they're being a little too restrictive. And same thing with GameStop being destructive is they're, they're introducing fake games into the market and not bothering to even look or even caring to look to see if these games are real. But not everything, not every time that I go out, game hunting is a disaster. In fact, most of the time, it's actually really a lot of fun. I get to discover games I've never heard of. I get to hang out with people. I just got uh, back last weekend from hanging out with Jamie, you know, RNG Gamer. And that was a blast. I got to find like two or three games. One of them was a VR game that I'd never heard of before. And uh, Jamie sold me on it. it. It looks and sounds great, you know? So yes, be cautious out there. You cannot let your guard down to be taken advantage of, but make sure that you're still having fun. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.